And we got a big one tonight in the city of brotherly love with the Eagles hosting Washington. And what's a must win game for both teams? Whichever team loses this game will have less than a 10% chance to make the playoffs according to ESPN's football power index. If Washington is able to get the win on the road, they would actually move up to the seventh seed in the NFC, jumping the Saints and the Vikings. Pretty interesting there. And of course, Washington will be without seven assistants tonight. It's one thing to be without your head coach, Marcus, but how big of a deal is it to be without seven assistant coaches? It's bigger than not having a head coach. Right. Uh, yep. The adjustments on the sideline for everybody at home in football is all done by assistants. Everybody has their job. The my defensive line coach, when we come off the field, he's adjusting D linemen yep. to make sure we can stop plays. The linebackers have their crew. And then the secondary with the safeties and the DB. So when you look at this coaching staff that's being depleted, you got a D line coach in Sam Mills who's going to have to adjust on the fly. Listen, coaching affects football more than any other sport yeah. because you can literally change something about how you're going about a game and win the game that way. Like, it's a lot of times in basketball, if LeBron on the team, you can adjust defense, but you're still going to lose. In football, you can make certain adjustments to take things away. And when your assistants are missing, you cannot get that real-time adjustment on the sideline. And every game I ever played in, in the pros, we went into it thinking something, and we had to change right. something yeah, right. after, a few, after a few series in the game. It's part of the game. Mina, you know, with Washington down, the seven coaches and their first and second string quarterbacks, you see Kerry yeah, Gilbert out there on, about to warm up. Come on, what G -G. does the game plan look like for Philly's defense tonight? It means they got to stop the run. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, which is something they've been really good at over the last yeah. few weeks. They've improved a lot. However, I do have one concern. In the Jets game, in particular, uh, Philadelphia at times, this is when Gardner Minshew was playing quarterback, y'all remember, uh, they, they had some issues with New York's run game, the misdirection they used, and mm. actually it reminds me a lot of Washington because they use a lot of pre-stat motion as well, a lot of eye candy. So it really is those Philadelphia linebackers whose play has improved a lot in recent weeks. It's all about discipline, fitting those runs because – Gary Gilbert's not going to try to beat them over the top that much. Yeah, and for me, it's can Philadelphia seize this moment, right? You get your huh. quarterback back. You're playing against a team that doesn't have their top two quarterbacks, and you're in the race and have an opportunity to kind of seize hold or get an opportunity to be a wild card team. Yeah. And if you're Nick Sirianni, is your team prepared? Yeah. Is Jalen Hurts prepared to play? Is your run game where it needs to be? And do you understand how to get your skilled players to football with opportunities to score? And if you can do that, this should be a blowout. I mean, yeah. you said before we started this segment, they 14. should win this game by two touchdowns. Yeah. And if you don't come out and play in that manner, if you allow them to hang around the way we saw the Raiders let the Cleveland Browns hang around last night as they were depleted, then you yeah. could find yourself in trouble late in the game. Yeah, I just think tonight starts an enormous month for Jalen Hurts. You guys know that Jalen Hurts has not played a good game in 38 days? The last mm -hmm. game that he played well in was November 14th against the, the And the he Broncos. had a, a top three QBR at that right. point. Right, and he was playing. Right? Like, you saw this type of pro progression mm -hmm. by him. Mm -hmm. Then they played the Saints. He played okay, but they ran the ball a ton on him. Then he played the Giants, played very poorly. Played poorly. And then Gun Gardner played, and then the bye week. Yeah. yeah. 38 days since he played a good football game. And this is, this is four games where it's Washington, New York, Washington, Dallas. Support. I think he has yeah. proven enough to be the guy in the future. But I think this month is going to go a long way in determining it, what they're going to do at the quarterback spot. And I think that I want to see tonight him be great with his decision-making as a runner. That's a big part of this offense. He's also got to be fantastic as a thrower and show that progression. I would feed the ball to Dallas Goddard and yep. Devontae Smith. Absolutely. I don't think they get the, the, the ball to those guys enough. If he's going to throw the ball 35 times, I think at least 22 of those Attempts, targets should be to either Dallas Goddard or Devontae Especially Smith. Especially with them missing Cam Curl, by the yep. way. Yeah, Goddard, this yeah. Is a good it's point. Yeah. Old school, old school saying from my high school basketball coach: You got to win the ones you're supposed to win. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. The other the ones are very one hard. Like, you you got to win the ones. Yeah, they supposed should to win this but week, like, next week, but it's and like then you, find the, those final two games. Yeah. Be it's like it's like you said though. When you watch these teams that have quarterbacks that play well, they understand where and who they're throwing the football to. Whether yeah. it's Tyreek and it's Travis, right? When you look at Minnesota, obviously you have Adam and. Uh, and Justin, 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 Justin yep. Jefferson. And so you have all of these teams that understand where they have skilled players that right. can win, and you don't necessarily have to throw them open. You yeah. know, Nick Sirianni said, hey, because this game had been moved, we'll play whenever they tell us to play, you know, the right attitude. But this is an unusual time from the standpoint of being an NFL team that thought they were playing on Sunday. Yeah. You're by, uh, you've been bought a little bit of extra time, yeah. but 
does that factor in at all from the Eagles Absolutely. standpoint? Absolutely. We are so creatures of habit. Yeah. Right. Like, you gotta like get, us, you gotta start You gotta start night. fast, you gotta yeah. get going, but but when we like we are so routine. That's the hardest part in retirement. Right. It's yeah. like, oh what? What <laughs> what are we doing? Do. I got a day? Like <laughs> yeah, what, what am I doing? Do. So so psychologically it's more impactful than actually once you get on the field and you yeah. start playing yeah. football, play things football. come back. But psychologically it does take a toll on you trying to get I think, ready. I think it kinda hits to your point about Nick Sirianni. You know, yeah. this is a game that Nick Sirianni has his team both by play calling and energy, but energy is kind of play calling to get them to start yeah. fast because the last thing you want is the lull in the game and lack of execution and efficiency. This is a bigger game for him as it is for Jalen Hurts. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree with that. See who's out on the other sideline. This I is a referendum that. on That's the coach. That's a good point. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.